My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. On today's show, we wind the clock back to last Easter and the 2017 edition of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour as 64 cars battle Mount Panorama in the ultimate showroom showdown. This is Speed Week. It's the ultimate showroom showdown. 64 cars across seven classes, tackling one of the world's most iconic racetracks for six gruelling hours. It's not just a test of man and machine either. It's a battle for brand supremacy. 16 manufacturers and more than 35 models have all gathered at Mount Panorama, fighting to win the top prize. This is the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. Hello and welcome to the 2017 High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. It's Easter Sunday, we've got the biggest ever field for an endurance race here at Mount Panorama. 64 cars on the grid. Before we wave the green flag, let's have a look at the makeup of this race in closer detail. Sixty-four cars across seven classes will face the starter in this year's edition of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour, making this the largest field to take part in any Bathurst endurance race. Leading the field is Class A1 for extreme performance forced induction. It's where you'll find the ongoing battle between Mitsubishi's Lancer Evo and the Subaru WRX from Japan against the might of Germany's best BMW, Audi and Mercedes AMG. Oh, and there's fast boards in the mix as well. In the form of the new Focus RS, defending champions Nathan Morecambe and Chaz Mostert. Class A2 is where you'll find extreme performance naturally aspirated cars. It's exclusively the domain of HSV, featuring a variety of club sports and GTS models and the sole CSV Mondo in the class. Class B1 is for high performance forced induction cars. It's the home for earlier generations of Subaru's WRX and some of BMW's finest machinery. Class B2 is high performance, naturally aspirated. Three Holden VE Commodores have entered this class, bursting full of talent and bravado. Last year's warfare between the Renault Megane and BMW 130i in the National Series resumes this weekend in Class C for performance cars. The Toyota 86 is once again the car to have in Class D for production cars. Also included in the mix are cars representing Honda, Mazda, Nissan and Mini. Rounding out this diverse field of cars is the Invitational class, led predominantly by saloon car teams from Queensland in Victoria. There's also the lone Hyundai XL, enabling car owner Scott Stevenson and his crew to live the Bathurst dream no matter what the budget. Well, it's going to be a huge day of racing here on the mountain. Two people behind the making of this great event are down on the grid. They're chatting to Andrew Roll. Thank you, Karelzi. Uh, I'm with event director James O'Brien. And James, uh, where else would you want to be on a sunny Easter Sunday than on the main scene for the Bathurst Six Hour? It's always great to be here, uh, particularly on a beautiful autumn day. And uh, I think we're making a little bit of history today, Andrew. Um, we think we're going to start 64 cars. Uh, I have to have a glance over my shoulder because there's a couple in pit lane. And, uh, and if we do, that'll, that'll set a record for, uh, for Mount Panorama and uh, going back to 1938. Well, congratulations on that one. That is a fabulous effort. Uh, we had a great event last year. It was the first one. How has it grown so much in just one year? Yeah, 50 entrants uh, in the first year, which uh, you know, was beyond expectations. And uh, we've grown that to, what, mid-60s uh, this year. 
uh, the response from the production car community has been fantastic. So um, to all involved out there, thank you, and especially to uh, all the volunteers here today, a big thank you. And great to see so many punters here on the mountain watching on for what, what's going to be a great race. Well, what have we got to look forward to? Well, hopefully six hours of great racing and uh, lots of cars on the lead lap at the end. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, and uh, again, I, look, we couldn't do this without the support of our, uh, of our sponsors. And uh, obviously our primary sponsor, our Nami Wright sponsor is High Tech Oils, uh, who have uh, signed on for three years last year. They've, they've seen the potential of this race and they've jumped on early and, uh, and we're very grateful for their support. And uh, it's great to have George with me to here today. And uh, with such a progression in just a short amount of time, how do you grow from here? Where do you go from here? How does it get better? Well, we won't focus so much on growing the quantity of the grid. We'll look at uh, the quality of the grid. So uh, hopefully we'll see uh, more uh, newer and newer cars, uh, better prepared teams, and uh, we can start to get a little bit more picky and choosy with the, uh, the quality of the grid. Not that there's anything wrong with what, with what is here today, but obviously we do have a, a finite capacity. So you know, that, that's the area we'll look at next year. Looking forward to that, definitely. One final question with you, tip for the race. Who do you think can take out this race win? Uh, a tip for the race will be a car from A1. How about that? <laughs> Sitting on the fence, great way to sit, uh, James. And of course, you mentioned our sponsors. None of this could be possible without uh, George Gambino and High Tech Oils. George, great to see you back uh, sponsoring the Bathurst Six Hour. I'm glad to be back again with all our team from High Tech Oils to help James do another great event. And uh, you've, uh, you've signed up for the next few years. Uh, tell me, uh, how long will you be uh, the name and right sponsor for this fantastic event? Well, we've signed for three years. We had a uh, year last year we signed with James, then we said, yes, we'll do three years. So we're committed for three years, and we think we'll be here for a long time to come. And uh, high-tech on oils are uh, synonymous with motorsport in the country? It is. It's um, starting to grow in the motorsport side of it now. We obviously sponsor a lot of things over the years, uh, local and, you know, state stuff we do but yeah it's great this is an iconic event for us so we've actually put this as our main uh, source of sponsorship and promotion and do the best we can here and of course high tech have got a great tent here uh, the punters are around where do they need to go and what can they get uh, from the high tech oils tent well basically we're we're national so you just ring the head office and we have one in every state and territory in australia we're probably the only australian brand of oil that's nationally now and uh, I put James on the spot and he sat on the fence. Who do you think is going to take out this great race today? Well, I know a few of them because we sponsor a few of them here as it is. So uh, the car actually behind me, he's a very good client of mine. So he won it last year, so I'm not going to say anything. But any of them are great. We have a great bunch of guys here and we sponsor a few guys now. So they're all good. We've got the high-tech car here somewhere down there. So anybody wins. It's all, as long as it's safe and a good race, we we'll love it. Well, guys, enjoy the race. It's going to be a fantastic event. The weather gods are certainly shining on us. Good luck to all the drivers. We're all set for six hours of scintillating action. Richard Krells, back to you. Thanks, Rosie. Great to hear from James O'Brien, the event director, and George Gambino from High Tech Oils, who's put a lot into both of them into building this event and getting it to where it is. And um, what a foundation to build on after two years, 64 cars to start this race. And, a great crowd here on Pitt Strait and all the way around Mount Panorama as well. Thanks to everybody here at the circuit for coming out. Social media already uh, going off. Don't forget, join the conversation, hashtag B6HR, to join us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. 64 cars to take the green flag for the high-tech oils back the six hour for 2017. It's Grant Sharon and Luke Searle on the front row, then Rod Saminer, two-time winner of the Bathurst 12 hour, alongside Ryan Simpson, who's a Porsche champion, and then Dylan Thomas and Berwick Linton next. David Wall is just behind in seventh, and Devash and Padiachi, Garth Walden, and Jason Gomesell in the big V8 Falcon from 10th place. It's a perfect alignment. It's the biggest race in Australia, the biggest field Mount Panorama has ever seen in an endurance race and it's about to start six hours of motor racing on Easter Sunday, the best racetrack in the world. We're about ready. It's the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour for 2017. And it's BMWs on the front row waiting for the green flag. Perfect alignment. We're ready to launch the race. We're go on Easter Sunday. Good start from the CXE Evo. Down the outside of Rod Salmon and sweeps through. Ryan Simpson in that white Mitsubishi Lancers away smartly too, but it's the BMW M4 that leads a massive traffic jam up Mountain Straight for the first of more 
than perhaps 120 times today. And have a look at that. They're still funneling out of turn one. And the M4 has disappeared with that straight line speed advantage that it's got. The Searle car in second. Good start for Ryan Simpson in that white pole performance Evo, jumping up into third place. Good start to Dylan Thomas in the CXC Global Racing Car. There's Berwick Linton, reigning Australian production car champion, looking up the inside of the Mitsubishi in the BMW 1M and just backs out of it. Behind them was Garth Walden, looking to do the same in the AMG A45. Very forceful start from Chas Boston, a little further back through the pack as well. He was actually threading the needle, going three wide into turn one and held corner for the first time, so he's a very lucky boy. But you'll see here in a moment how Grant Sharon will pull away. We saw going up Mountain Straight, but then the field will compress once they come back down to Forest Elbow. Good clean start to McPhillamy Park for the first time. And the BMW is a one and two. Timing showing Paul Morris behind the wheel of car number 62, but our driver nomination said it would be Luke Searle starting. Either can do the job. Luke Searle was superb in qualifying yesterday, did a 25-9 which at the time was the fastest ever production car lap at this place. He said in the media conference afterwards, good luck to anyone that beat that time. And he was talking about Grant Sharon, who did the 25-4 that put the bright red M4 on pole position. So that is a charging Ford Focus RS, and it's making up plenty of ground, and it's got a fired up Chaz Mostert behind the wheel. That car started 16th, and he's already fighting with David Wall in the East Holiday Park Mitsubishi. He's got Garth Warden in front of him as well, so it's almost like a traffic jam as they come down into the kink for the first time. Mostert will make that spot up there on Linton as they come through the kink, but uh, it's going to be one of those races, actually. Here he comes now down the inside, so he's got Linton in front of him, now gets down the inside of the Mitsubishi and makes up that spot. It's going to be fascinating to see how many spots he's actually made up on this initial start, because I'll tell you what, he's been forceful, and that's what he needs to do. He's not far off the top six now. The teammates go side by side. Down the inside is Garth Walden on the Porsche race at Devarshan Padiachi, so the teammates swap spots. So at the end of lap one, it's Grant Sharon, Luke Searle, the margin, 2.8 seconds. Then it's Ryan Simpson up to third, game for them. Dylan Thomas to fourth, Garth Walden fifth, Padiachi sixth. Then it's Berwick Linton, then it's Chaz Mostert. He's gone 16th to eighth in one lap of Mount Panorama. David Wall is ninth, Rod Salmon a little bit further back having started that car third. Conservative for Rod early in the motor race. It's not a bad strategy, to be brutally honest. Carl Reindler, meanwhile, from 58th is 30th at the end of lap one. And up the inside goes David Wall and retakes the position. This is what we're going to see throughout the Porsche of the day, isn't it? Because the great thing about production car racing is that all these cars achieve their speeds differently across the racetrack. And it's going to be nip and tuck as to where you possibly block and where you let the other drivers through. But at this point of the race, it's all about being smart, just making sure that you tick away this first in the race. Because when you compress like this, it's so easy to throw the car down the inside. One lock up, though, means you're hard into the other person. Exciting, isn't it? How good was that? What an opening lap. How good was the traffic jam up Mountain Straight? And that shot of the cars still going through Turn 1 as the leaders were going up to Griffin's Bend. Just incredible. 64 cars on the start. Cars in pit lane. And this was the car we touched on on the formation lap. Aaron McGill and Aaron Tepp, a couple of Supercar Series regulars. Aaron retired from Supercars at the end of last year. It was a reasonably last minute deal to get this program together, but his longtime sponsor, Battery World, jumped on board and unfortunately they've come into pit lane. So dramas for Aaron's Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. What I love about this battle here between Wall and uh, Chaz Mostert is they're treating it like it's a sprint race. Oh, no. We're already only 10 minutes into this. This is fascinating to watch. Yeah, five hours and 50 to go exactly right now. So it's busy stuff and Mostert goes past David Wall in the Evo. Berwick Linton just in front in that BMW 1M. That's another really well proven car. He'll share that with Orange's Tim Lay throughout the course of the race. And now Wally looks up the inside of Chaz at the kink at the chase, which even in a production car is a 250 kilometre an hour corner. If you're in everything other than a BMW M4, I might add. This is some seriously oh. forceful stuff, but look at that. There's oh, the story. He's unhappy. Yep. Damn. Gloves got thrown out. Oh, he made the start. At least he can say he got to the start of the race. So Aaron Tepp won't get any laps. Meanwhile, this little squabble goes on. Lost it, goes across the line. He's in eighth place. Berwick Linton in seventh. They had turbo boost issues in the DPO and super cheap Ford Focus RS uh, in qualifying yesterday, which restricted their pace. So basically, they ran the session with zero boost and still did a two minute 30. 
which is a really good lap time. So the thing's got pace, but it is new car gremlins and a brand new car that was only finished a week before this race actually started. It's exactly what Chaz Mostert said on social media last night. He said it's just a couple of little niggling gremlins that you get with a brand new car. And I went down and spoke to the team just prior to this and I said, are all the gremlins out? And they said, we should be absolutely fine and click, squeaky clean to go for this race this afternoon. So that's good news indeed. Well, the pace will be the biggest question mark for me because they haven't had an enormous amount of running this weekend, Brian. So um, if they have got the kinks out of it, if it comes down to an arm wrestle at the end and they need raw speed, it might not be there. But... Uh, it is a long motor race and that's a very, very smart team with some really experienced guys behind the scenes as well. So we've seen the Battery World car roll down into pit lane and Rolsey's found Aaron McGill. Thanks a lot, Richie. Aaron, uh, heartbreaking to see you come into just one lap. Uh, it all started uh, to go wrong on Friday. What happened? Well, I think I must have run over the Easter Bunny on Friday, mate. And it's just, yeah, we broke a ball joint which put it into the fence. Um, and that just destroyed the car at the front end of it. The only thing wasn't busted was the battery, so at least battery well didn't let us down. <laughs> and then, look, we've just run out of spares and it's broken the diff as I've gone out of the, cut, uh, out of the cutting on the first lap. It just went bang, so we haven't got another one. That's the end of the story. I know we haven't got another one. <laughs> the boys must have put a hell of a lot of work in just to get you out there. Yeah, look, it's been non-stop since, uh, since Friday when it hit the wall. It was a bit, pretty big crash, obviously, and um, we've used every spare part we've got and uh, that's the way it rolls, but I'm just tired of rolling my way, you know? <laughs> well, it was a miracle you got to the start line. If it's any consolation, you were the 64th car to start, uh, making uh, it a record-breaking field here at Bathurst. So okay. take that as some consolation. Well, Rosie, it wouldn't have happened without Battery World. I know everyone plugs their sponsor, but they've been so good to me, and I've let them down, unfortunately. And there's, you know, let's, hopefully we'll be back next year. It's a great event, for what um, James has done, and everybody, all the volunteers. Fantastic event. It's only going to get bigger. We'll be back. Well, put your feet up, enjoy the race, and we hope to see you back next year. No worries. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks. Thanks, Rosie. What a shame for Aaron McGill, but he took that in good grace, and we hope to see that team back. Bathurst Spirit fighting on, and we've got a car in the wall. It's car 69. It's the class leading car from class B2 all weekend long. B2 being the high-performance, normally aspirated category. He's gone past the grey Gomesal. Falcon. So this is Ford v Holden here, folks. Oh, wow, and contact with the Bilstein car. So he went round the outside, had a big lose, so might have got out on the kerb and then made contact. Keeping in mind, 12 months ago, that car was in fact involved in another incident and still actually managed to win the race. So mm. even though you might have dramas early on in this race, it doesn't mean for certain that you're going to be Unfortunately, out for the rest of the day, if they can recover and just keep on plugging away, they might just make it up come the end of the day. Yeah, Crick Corp Racing, um, they've had a really good program and did a lot of development and testing on that car coming into it with uh, Joe Crinnell lost Tony Virag, who's hugely experienced in big cars, and Anthony Loscialpo, who last year ran in the V8 Touring Car Series part-time. So, really experienced outfit. The, the beauty of this race, as you mentioned, is that you can afford some injury time, so you can sit on the bench for a bit, get the car back into the game, and still get yourself on that Bathurst podium at the end of the motor race. And we're just waiting and we hear safety cars. So yeah, safety car boards and flags for the first time today. There were six safety car interruptions in the race in 2016. So the safety car comes out before the compulsory pit stop window opens. So that's an important factor as we're only 16, 15 minutes into this race and we've got our first safety car. Very much like what we saw last year. I don't think anyone would be coming into the pits other than just a quick top up, but it will not count as one of their either three or four compulsory pit stops. Should mention a new lap record set by Grant Sharon out in front, clean air, with a 226.43 on his second lap. That is a new lap record. So we are under the high-tech oil safety car. This is why the Falcon slowed down Jason Gomesal and he was minding his own business and unfortunately Tony Virag went round the outside, had the big slide. Now what's gone on out of shot there, we understand is that Domicel things run out of brakes and it's fired down the escape road at Hancock Turn and uh, had apparently what is quite a big impact down there. So that's, uh, that's a massive shame for those guys. That explains why he was going slowly on the exit of uh, Elkford Chase. We're gonna take a very short break. We're green at the end of this lap. We'll come back and bring you all the action in just a sec.
Welcome back to Mount Panorama, the high tech oils bath, the six hour for 2017. The safety car is in. So we've got green flag running conditions at the end of uh, this lap, of course. And this is going to be really interesting over the course of the day. There's no overlapping before they get to the control line, which is under the bridge. So they'll just have a look at that with Luke Searle. I think he was okay, but you're not allowed to overlap before you get to that control line under the bridge. They were very, very strict on that in the driver's briefing. But as the field concertina is up, because some are braking for Hancock Murray's corner, it gets a little bit busy as Carl Reinlett, the 46 car with the light blue roof, continues to blaze his way towards the top 10, having started this race from a different postcode. So we're back under racing. Grant Sharon leads the way in the BMW M4 that's been the dominant car all weekend long. This is busy. Up to turn two, Mostert round the outside. Devash and Padiachi's there. Garth Walden was making a move too. He was trying to work his way past on Dylan Thomas, but couldn't quite get the move done as Mercedes and Mitsubishi squabble on the run up into the cutting. We were lucky on that restart and the fact that there was no lap traffic in front of our leaders. So obviously that overlapping issue is going to be a major factor later on once we get those cars mixed in with those lap runners but uh, so far not too bad on this restart but Mostert I tell you what he is seriously being very aggressive in this first stage as he has to be of course starting down there in position 17 making his way solely inside oh, the top 10 wow, and this wait. is a big move now at the top of Mount Panorama going into Skyline wow McPhilby Park is going to see a lot of that action I reckon this first stint with Chaz Mostert he's never been accused of not being completely committed behind the wheel of the steering Wheel, uh, behind the wheel of a racing car, Chaz Mostert, and he goes past Garth Walden, who gave him racing room. What a bit of racing that was. Wow. So the two AMGs from Garth Walden Racing resume being line of stern. Devash and Padiachi just in behind the team boss, but Mostert now comes his way towards the top five. Great stuff, and he's not done yet because he's working over Dylan Thomas as they come out of the elbow. So that is fifth place. He's about to be fourth. Let's see what an Evo's like compared to the RS Focus in the straight line down towards the chase. He seems to just to tuck in there, but let's see how he goes under brakes as they go through the kink in the chase there. Oh, a little bit of a waggle there from Chaz Mostert, but gets the job done. P4. Former Bathurst 1000 winner. He raced the 12 hour this year, led the early stages of that, driving a BMW for Ryan McLeod was brilliant. Unfortunately, that car was ruled out of the race, but he showed what he was capable of in a GT car, doing the same in a production car. So, Chaz Mostert runs P4 in the high-tech oils back to six hour. He's passed Devash and Padiachi, Garth Walden and Dylan Thomas in a lap, and he now will hone in on the back of Ryan Simpson, who sits third. Sharon in front by 1.7 seconds. What a drive from Mostert, big move up the top, but Garth Walden using his experience and he's been around here plenty of times, just bailing out and no point to fight for it. And we're told safety car and it is safety car for the second time. Unsighted by us so far. We are under safety car for the second time today. So just one green flag lap back under racing. Let's go down to pit lane and hear from the race leaders. I'm with Ian Sharon and Ian, I'm a massive BMW fan and that looks like one hell of a Beamer right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bit of a weapon. It's uh, got plenty of power in a straight line, as you can see. So, you know, off the start, we're four or five cars in front. It's good. And uh, first time the car's had a run? Yeah, this is its first race. So, you know, before this weekend, we only had, you know, probably a day of testing and that was it. So first race for it. So six hour race, all about tactics. What are yours? Uh, look, it's it's just hard to tell. There's so many cars, and there could be so many pit stops, and you know, like it, yeah, we've seen a couple of safety cars already. So we've just got to take it as it comes and make the calls as it comes. So I think if you try and lock into a strategy too early, uh, you could get caught out. So you really got to roll with the punches. This is why we're under safety car. It's car five, Kerry McMahon behind the wheel, sharing with Doug Westwood this weekend, little BMW M3. Um, we understand they actually clipped the wall just coming out of Forest Elbow, just near the Bathurst Goldfields up there at the top of the mountain. So that is why we're under safety car and that car had damage and was in a dangerous position, which is why we're under our second safety car interruption of the day to recover that car. So it'll be Grant Sharon who leads the field back around to green. They've led the early stages of this race. They haven't had an opportunity to build an enormous margin just yet. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they can do on a green flag run and how far ahead they can go. And Chaz
check out the straight line performance of that M4 on the restart. Pulling away from Luke Sell. We're back under green. Restart number two. You can see on this restart that there's already some side-by-side -side action going down to turn number one. Then James Abella in the Subaru with Peter Patton in behind him looking down the inside, then going into Hell Corner. And the Subaru has been lacking a lot of top-end speed this weekend, so they might actually get eaten up by the time they get to Griffin's Bend. Yeah, they're actually talking about pulling the rear wing off that car to try and get it some... Uh, make it more slippery, take the drag out, but they weren't allowed to because if it's sold with the rear wing, you've got to race it with the rear wing. So, uh, unfortunately, they will have to battle on. But that car was in the top five fastest cars across the top in Sector 2 from the cutting down to Forest Elbow. So it's a quick race car, and that's a really handy little pairing too with Carrera Cup racer James Bella and Cameron Hill, the Australian Formula 4 champion a couple of years ago. They're just hovering outside the top ten at the moment. Track temperature, by the way, uh, over 38 degrees. So that blazing sun has heated the track up. Ambient about 22 was the top for today. Light breeze blowing across the racetrack towards the east, and it's a nice day for motor racing. Lee Burgess is currently leading uh, Class B1 at the moment in that car that won this race last year. The current leader of Class C, the Auburn brothers, Kyle behind the wheel there, Blake waiting in the pits of that uh, beautifully presented gun. Let's have a look at a moment at the top. It's uh, the class leader in the muscle Toyota. Ooh. Wow, into the fence. Big, heavy hit too. Coming on to McPhillamy Park for car 88. One of the Queensland saloon car competitors. That's a fairly large whack too. That's the Luke Anderson, Chris Donnelly car. Hefty hit. They build those things like tanks, those saloon cars. It's Luke Anderson behind the wheel, but that's a big moment. So the saloon cars are quite loose across the top of Mount Panorama. Well, let's have a look at a HSV GDS Coupe coming off the road at the chase just before the Hitachi Bridge. So this is a great scrap. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth all locked together. Look at Reinley here moving this car over on the racetrack trying to find a way past Garth Walden. You know that Walden's not going to give him an inch, but uh, just as we saw there a moment ago, he was a little wide coming out of Griffin's Bend that time by, so it might have been an opportunity. There's an overlap here as they come through the left hand into the cutting, but holding the inside line at the moment is Walden, and look just in behind them, David Wall is saying, you boys keep fighting because I'll come into this and I'll join it as well. The Reinley thing's clearly got speed to burn over Garth Walden, but the Merck's a little bit quicker in a straight line, so it makes it difficult to overtake. This is a big story, because this is the fastest car in the field, still sitting in pit lane, and they're now a long way down the order. They're back out, but that's a long stop, and they're several laps off the pace, and even though they've got five hours to go in the motor race, to come back from here will be an enormous effort. That was stationary for 8 minutes and 49 seconds, so there you go. Did Carl Reinley get by Garth Walden? Yes, he did. So we just cut away as they went side by side over the skyline at 170 odd kilometres an hour as the world disappears beneath the steering wheel. Um, so he's gone through, so Reinley elevates himself to third place, Walden back to fourth, and they've just dropped David Wall a little bit. Let's find out what went on with the Sharon's Andrew Rolls on the spot. Thanks, Crosby. Ian, an unscheduled pit stop there. What happened? Uh, Grant just said he heard a pop and lost a bit of power. So obviously a hose popped off. We come in, uh, Jimmy was onto it, found it straight away. Just took a little bit of time to get it back on and get it up nice and tight so it doesn't happen again. But yeah, this is one of those things, new car. Yeah, it's what happens. Better it happens now than in five hours time. Yeah, well, we've still got plenty of time to try and work back into it. So who knows what else is going to happen. We've still got plenty of speed, plenty of time. We'll give it a crack. And there's nothing like a challenge. Absolutely, we love that. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. So we're an hour into the high tech Earls Bathurst six hour. Here's how the uh, classes look. It's Luke Searle leading the way, Ryan Simpson next, and Carl Reinler in third. Garth Walden is fourth. We saw that great fight for the final spot in the top three. Then David Wall is fifth. Devarshan Padiachi sixth. Then Mark Eddy up to seventh in the TTRS. Then Beric Linton, Rod Salmon and Lee Burgess rounding out the top ten. So that's the Ridges leaderboard. The classes, that's how they stand. It's Graham Muir on top in the VE HSV in class A2. Brian Walden leads the way. The defending winners on top in their VE SSV red line in B2. The Auburn boys from Bathurst lead the way in class C. 
Jimmy Vernon still on top in D and Colby Cowan in the saloon car leads the way in the invitational class with thanks to Century Batteries. There's the leaders, Morris getting in that very well known floral Hawaiian shirt spec helmet jumps in and Luke Searle who has done a very very good job this weekend, it's the best I've seen him drive, lapping qualifying was outstanding, controlled and measured out in front in the face of safety cars in this race. The drive of the day so far, there's been some great performances, but it has to go to Carl Reinler, who's ridden the Bathurst roller coaster this weekend, but he's down in pit lane chatting to Rawlsey. Carl Reinler, 59th to second. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun out there. Pretty crazy at the start. Um, it was a bit of a roadblock, to be honest, up until Oh, halfway up the hill I reckon. I thought I'd actually pick off a few more early on but there's only so much you can do. We are in a four wheel drive and I did contemplate taking to the grass a couple of times but uh, I didn't think it was probably appropriate. I'm sure the guys upstairs wouldn't have been too happy with me but um, just plucked them off one by one. I've never really done a race like this before so uh, as you can see big smile on my face. I'm having a good time out there and despite the drama we've had the weekend so far with um, Obviously the drive shaft issue earlier in the weekend and being relegated to rear of grid after qualifying third, we're um, back into a position that we're, uh, we, we feel we should be, where our car is capable of running. We've got Andrew in the car now, um, it's up to him for the next at least hour or so to um, keep it up there and just nurse that car. And on that I can bring news that car 29, which is the second of two cars from Garth Walton Racing's AMG squad, they are likely to get pinged for a pit stop infringement time, not being underneath two minutes and 30. Come back to that. Let's go down to Rawlsey again. He's been busy in pit lane, Rawlsey. I'm with Rick Shaw, Category C. You're right up there uh, fighting for that uh, f fighting for that first spot in, the, in Category C. How was your drive? Look, the drive was great. It got a little bit boring there at one stage because there's been a lot of yellows and safety cars. But once we're going and racing, I think that's what everybody wants to do here. We're just settling into a groove, really enjoying it. The, the Biodynamic RX-8 is going brilliantly. The crew's going even better. They're just doing a marvellous job. We're like a, a well-oiled machine at the moment. What are your plans from here? Well, just to keep trying to keep on the state's uh, lead lap of Class C so that when it gets down to the last hour, we can actually go and race. And that's our main prerogative, you know, just stay with the leaders. We don't have the horsepower in the RX-8 up the hill that they have, but we're much faster across the top. So, Beric Linton, they didn't pit the number 80 Alfera Bruce Linton BMW 1M, and they have stayed out, and as a result, have taken the race lead. Meanwhile, battle for position, Cameron Hill, Australian Formula Ford champion a couple of years ago, young man from Canberra, who won the Formula Ford Championship at Wakefield Park, not far from Canberra. It's a pretty big day, and Alan Webber was on hand that day when he took that title, watching on. So the Canberra slash Queenbian connection. Enjoyed that. He's a terrific young driver, James Abella, Horsley Park Gunshop car. Done a good job today, circulating around, staying out of drama, but he's got pretty quick Paul Morris bottled up behind him. This race is really going to be a case of just survive until that final hour, that final stop. Get yourself on the lead lap, stay there and you'll be okay. If we do get a safety car, keeping in mind, the Merrick Linton, Tim Lane, BMW, looking at how it's worked for them, I mean, they've been able to get one hour, one and a half hour stints, first stint, this stint as well. If they do it again, I mean, they're looking at making the race on three stops. Them being a Class A one car, they've got to do four stops. So I'm not actually sure how it's gonna work for them right now. I just saw a shot there of Robert Hughes exiting that car that stopped just before the dipper, and it will be a safety car. It's a busy old place, the mountain. Get to see what happened to the Allsport Motorsport car. The other one has been performing reasonably well. Hadrian Morale is behind the wheel, currently scored in 33rd place. So this is it pointing the wrong way. Was it helped? It was. It looks like it by car seven, which is Ryan Simpson behind the wheel. So. Does Linton and Lay pit? The answer is yes, they do. And as Brian was speculating before, I think they had to. We might be able to hear a little bit more from one of our leading cars. Andrew Rolls has found Jim Polisina. Jim, uh, we just saw a replay there involving your co-driver, Ryan Simpson. What are your thoughts? Oh, mate, I wasn't in the car. Couldn't see what happened. I don't think he's done anything. But, um, um, yeah, I think, he, I think we're right. Great start to the race from you. Uh, you seem to be having far too much fun out there at the front of the pack with uh, with the lights of Chas. Yeah, it's great out there. There's a lot of respect amongst the drivers. Everyone's generally leaving room. Car feels very strong. Uh, we'll be in a good position at the end of the race. 
How's your strategy going in terms of number of pit stops? Yeah, clockwork. We couldn't pick a better strategy, so we're right on it. Um, so, assuming we've had a lot of safety cars, so it's pretty easy to get it right. But uh, at the moment, we're, we're bang on where we want to be. So we're under safety car, it's the high-tech oils, Bathurst six hour, take a break, come back with green flag racing after this. Welcome back to Mount Panorama, high-tech oils, Bathurst six hour, and we're in another safety car period. Lights will be out on the high-tech oils safety car this lap. It'll be Paul Morris leading the field back to green. Another restart where everyone in this field will hold their breath and try and get through one lap and then two and try and get a race run going. Easier said than done. Well, so far today, yeah. Six in the whole race last year. I think that 500 mile mark we were talking about at the start, 130 laps, I think it's safe. I think we'll be in race record territory today. Away we go. Another restart. The High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 out and a beautiful afternoon in the central west of New South Wales in Bathurst Town. And it's Morris, Simpson, Andrews, O'Dowd, Josh Heath in car 52 up to P5. Josh Heath in P5 in the Class D car. Impressive. That slipped under the radar. Nathan Morkham is 6th in car number 1, then Tony Alford in the TTRS is 7th. And there's some shuffled up cars in this top 10 at the moment, just with cars staying out and not pitting. And bear in mind, those Class D cars have got one less compulsory pit stop to do. So, well, Josh Heath has only done the one pit stop so far in the two hours and no, they three last, hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, they last pitted an hour and 20 ago. So, yeah, they could probably go a little bit further. They are there on track position. They have only completed one pit stop and all the safety cars have meant that their lap speed differential between the leaders and they're probably 15 seconds a lap slower on average than the leaders means that they haven't dropped off the lead lap. So Josh Heath is P5 in a Class D Toyota 86 on merit, 100% on merit for just preserving and staying out there. And that's what we love about endurance racing. How good is that? And I reckon in terms of his strategy, he probably needs another safety car to come out within the next 20 minutes, and that will be his waiting gold, I reckon. So, because then he's almost going to be on the same cycle as those in front, with one more stop to go towards the end. Josh Heath, driving with his father, Graham Heath, this weekend. They've got Megan, the 19-year-old, as the team manager this weekend, too. So it's the full family affair down there. It's turning out to be a masterstroke. It's some mixed up, muddled up results because of all this. Chris Sutton in the number three car that won the class last year, they're inside the top 10 as well, so they're ninth. Now they aren't actually gonna tumble down the order if we get some green flag running, but wow. And 46 gets a black flag for a restart infringement. That was on the previous restart. So that's the Richmond Rhymler car. So that hadn't served that penalty yet. And uh, we're being told tar car number 23 get a penalty two, which is the John McCleverty, Brad Zacker and Michael Zacker Invitational Class car. And that is the class leader in Invitational, the 25th outright in the saloon car class. And they will get a penalty for a restart infringement. Now, I remember that before that I said, I've got my own theory on, I think a black flag is going to be given to somebody. It was car 46. Yep. I just didn't want to say anything at the time. And here it comes and in here the it comes now. in right now. Okay. So all that hard work to get back on the lead lap, and they're only going to lose 32 seconds. They won't lose a lap through this, but they'll go right to the very tail end of that queue. But, I mean, that's the way this race is playing out. If you're on the lead lap after the final pit stop, it's anybody's game today. And all these safety cars early on have helped that. They've just kept cars that perhaps shouldn't be in contention. It's kept them in the race. And ordinarily, it's like drive-through penalties would kill your day, but not today. It's not so much of a drama. Ryan Simpson works his way past the Kyle Orford BMW 1M. 5.7 seconds behind the race leader, Paul Morris. Just going back to that battle for Class D again, so you've got Josh Heath, 33 seconds off the race leader. The next person in Class D is Chris Sutton in the number three Toyota 86. They're only really seven seconds away. Yeah, it's a good battle, and even Jimmy Vernon is third in Class D and still on the lead lap of the race in 18th place outright. So those Toyota 86s, they're 
remarkable things and they just pound around and by virtue of not having to stop particularly often in the motor race they continue to go on so they've done one pit stop in the first three hours and 23 minutes of the race they've got to do two in the last two hours and 36 so they'll get punished a little bit in the second half of the race and speaking of that outstanding performance Rolsey's found them in pit lane Graham Heath, uh, the Toyota 86 Class D car burning up the track. Yeah, it's going really well at the moment. Um, Josh is out there just circulating around. We've told him not to kill it off, but um, yeah, he's going really, really well. Quicker than he's been around here before. So this is his first trip to the mountain. So yeah, really good. And uh, how was your stint? Obviously, you've uh, you set him up in, uh, in a fantastic position. Yeah, look, I actually came in in third position. So he's put us up to the front. So, yeah, superb. Look, we were just shadowing the other guys. It's a quick race out there, a lot of safety cars, so we'll just have to see what happens in the next couple of hours, yeah. How's your strategy going with the safety car? Number of pit stops and what have you still got to tick off to, uh, to get through this race? Oh, we've got two more uh, pit stops to go, but we're on our strategy at the moment. So safety cars, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but yeah, all will be good, I'm sure. Class D car, overall podium finish. Is it a, is it a chance? No hoping. <laughs> no hoping. No, no. Look, I'll just be happy to finish. Absolutely happy. So, you know, to do this with Josh, good stuff. And uh, what words of advice did you give him when you did your changeover? None. <laughs> and I'm not talking to him. I'm just letting him go. Absolutely let him do his thing. He might give me some when he gets out. <laughs> well, he's looking great. The team's looking great. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. There's some interesting emails going back and forth with race control as well. There's actually teams querying race control about the running order because they're going, how come our class rival is so far up the leaderboard and we're not? We're in identical cars, but that's just the way the race has played out. And there's still 233 and 38 to go, so I wonder, uh, I wonder what's more to come. But at the moment, there's going to be at least a dozen cars in the lead lap going into the final order if it runs the way it is so and they've all got plenty of firepower and, and just to show though that point how quickly those class d cars so josh heath was fifth two laps ago he's now 12th um, and that's not a black mark against his name that's just the performance differential between the class a cars and uh, those further down the field in the classes but it is great to see those class battles so strong throughout this race and chris sutton closing in actually a little bit it looks like on Josh Heath and Jimmy Vernon still well within contention. So here in the gate, where's the Sherrins? So they made the stop. Uh, so they're scoring 30th place now. So they're only one lap behind the leader. So they made that stop under safety car. So under the next safety car, which sort of feels inevitable, but um, I wonder if they stay out, get that lap back, and then worry about strategy after that. Surely you just get yourself on the lead lap. I mean, Lazarus like come back from them so far. They were three laps down. It's they spent eight minutes in pit lane, bro. <laughs> it's just stupendous, isn't it? How they could be back in the fight just about with, well, the second half of the race to go. I mean, that would have to be the biggest mountain story or mountain win, I think, in the history of this place. Speaking of the Sharon uh, entry, we're following it now under the Hitachi Bridge. Coming down, looking left, looking right on the number 11. Probably just off to falling behind, but probably will get him on the straight here. Oh, based on the straight line speed of that thing, yes. it'll get everything on the straight. So that's another one down. So it's now 10 cars away from being on the lead lap, basically. Um, just an update from our friends at Car 77. That's the BMW 1M, Anthony Saul, Adam Burgess and Craig Burgess. They've had a pretty shocking day. They had quite a lot of damage on that car, but they've spent some time in pit lane repairing the damage. Adam Burgess now behind the wheel of car 77 and back out and uh, just got on the radio and said to his team, thanks guys. Nice Guess job. what's coming back out? It's the Nissan Pulsar. Oh, brilliant. Number 33 is just traversing the lane now. That's an amazing performance. That car blew an engine earlier in the motor race. It's 19 laps down. There is some seriously impressive great stories up and down this pit lane at the moment, which is great to follow. and. Uh, Nice to have that car back out there. Look at this though, it's all on at the front of the race because down the inside now and a change for position. Ryan Simpson goes to the race lead, getting underneath Paul Morris there at the chase. So another lead change at the moment. 
as they come down towards the Hancock Tyres Murray's Corner and looking all over the racetrack, you can see at the moment that the Searle Morris entry is trying to find a way back past, but Ryan Simpson will now take the lead of the High Tech Oils Bath the six hour after 62 laps. And considerably as well, meaning that uh He's just going through the chase there now. There's about two or three car links in between them, so he's really giving it the boot. Well, I mean, this team has just sort of played themselves into the race because their team car's in third. Here's a look. Good run through the kink. So he got in the toe of the BMW, and much like the Focus RS, the short wheelbase hatchback style cars, a little bit less stable under brakes. And that's just a textbook Mount Panorama overtaking manoeuvre from a guy that's done a few of those in his life, Ryan Simpson who's got records in both the GT3 Cup Challenge and the V8 Touring Car Series for most race wins in a row. Terrific driver, graduate from Formula Ford. He's part of the Sonic Motor Racing stable of young guns. And seemingly hundreds of drivers that Mick and Maria Ritter from Melbourne have churned out over the years. That amazing program down there. Um, stepped back from racing anything at the start of last season and hasn't driven too much in the last 18 months, but certainly hasn't got rusty, has he? leads the race a nice pass on paul morris and the evo gets itself back in front there's so many different strategies in this race at the moment <laughs> tell you what my brain's going into overdrive because when you look at the leaders i mean they haven't pitted for quite a while so in terms of paul morris he's been in the car now since hour and two minutes uh, hour and 12 minutes in this race so he's in a stint now of two hours and 13 minutes and they last actually pitted at two hours 17 so very shortly sort of be coming up towards a window of pitting yeah you're right even Garth Walden is 11th yeah. in car 45, but remember they stopped at the end of that last safety car. So they're out of sync with those around them, but they're only 57 seconds off the lead of the motor race, so, and they're on the lead lap. And it's different again when you go to the Ryan Simpson, Jim Policina car, because they last pitted for their second stop at two hours and 46 minutes. So again, two different variations of strategies for our race leaders, about half an hour difference. But they've still, got, so they've still got time to burn out in front of the race, don't they? They've probably got another 15 minutes at least at this pace to build a bit of a margin towards that next pit stop. Nathan Moore comes up to fourth. We're just running through the timing order to here, folks, because it's pretty busy and it seems to change quite regularly today. <laughs> uh, so it's often hard to keep up with. But Nathan Moore comes fourth in the DPO number one Ford Focus RS. So they're just hovering there or thereabouts at the moment. And at the moment, they're just doing pretty consistent 231s. And actually, he's honing in on John O'Dowd. And last time around, I think O'Dowd had a bit of traffic, but he was three seconds faster than the Evo that's currently holding down third place. So Morecambe's coming. Tony Alford back up to P5 in the Audi TTRS. Jacob Andrews shuffled back to sixth place. Ben Porter is up to seventh. So car 29, which had a penalty early on for a safety car infringement, I think that was infringement v1.0 because uh, there's been four or five different iterations of those today um, they're back up to seventh place so that's the car he's sharing with Rob Woods and Devash and Padiachi. Timmy lays eighth so they let that race pit it under caution and have resumed Rod Salmon ninth so he's taken over the number 12 AMG from Nathan Antunis and Garth Walden rounding out the top 10 What's going to be a big point at this part of the race now is going to be driver time. Let's use this one as an example. So Garth Warner is currently in the car right now. They last pitted at 3 hours and 15. Now Craig Baird did a stint of 2 hours and 3 minutes. So therefore Craig Baird needs to step back in that car at least no earlier than with 2 hours and 27 minutes of this race to go. Otherwise, he will exceed his 3 hours, 3 and a half hours maximum driving time. And, I hate to bring up old wounds, but that will be a familiar story for Craig Baird at Mount Panorama, because if you turn your minds back to when we were fortunate enough, some people were fortunate to have two Bathurst 1000s in a year. Yes. The two litre race went the way of BMW in 1997, um, and it was Craig Baird who crossed the line first with Paul Morris. Unfortunately, they were disqualified for exceeding Craig Baird's driving time. Fairly perilous moment. That's the 23 car that was actually leading its class. Let's check and see if they are still. Ash Jarvis back in front in Invitational now. So they, they had a penalty, didn't they, a couple of laps ago that they had to serve for that restart infringement. Off at the chase. Car 65. Proof that you give a guy a wrap and it ends up parked off the side of the road because CXC Global State just gets worse with Jacob Andrews and Mark Griffith looking like their day's done. 
doesn't look like it's buried. In fact, it looks like it's still sitting on grass. The problem with that part of the world is too that it's the fastest corner in Australian motorsport leading into a very heavy braking zone. I wonder if he's had a tyre go down or cut a tyre because he had a huge lose through the kink. And I think the reason he stopped is because he's just gathering himself because he almost ended up in the wall. And one of our leading contenders, Tim Lay, had to take massive evasive action to get out of the way as his teammate, Berwick Linton, gets himself ready to jump back in that car. So I think they've seen that car parked. <laughs> and actually, Tim Lay showing as being in pit lane. So he was on an in-lap. Well, I reckon they might have called it and said, hey, look, we're towards the end of our fuel window. Let's just roll the dice. If a safety car comes out on this, we've played it beautifully. So here's car 80, Tim Lay pit. So green flag pit stop, which has been a rarity today. And they'll almost certainly lose a lap through this. <laughs> or will they? <laughs> So in the space oh, of a heartbeat, that's just been the best, one of the best yeah. calls of the race. We'll learn more about that because uh, Rawlsy's found Tim Lay. He's just jumped out of the BMW. ABS Hello. problems. What, what, what's happening out there? It was all going pretty well, actually. I mean, it's just had an, like an intermittent problem where the ABS light comes on and then the ABS stops working. So unfortunately, it happened down into the chase then and um, it just locked up all the, all the tyres. Couldn't, couldn't get it unlocked, unfortunately. So um, anyway. That's the way it goes. Hairy moment? Oh, not, not overly, not overly. I was just trying to get the brake unlocked, you know, so I didn't square the tyres, but I just couldn't get it unlocked, so I, but the tyres were knackered, so I just had to come straight in. One thing that is working uh, pretty well is your pit stop strategy. Uh, tell us about that. Oh, well, you know, the boys are just doing what they did last year to help Berwick win the production car championship. They're just doing a solid job. We may not have be the paciest car out there, but... Um, these, these little things, unfortunately, in these races, like a, a ABS light coming on can just ruin your day. So we'll just put our heads down, keep going, and we'll end up somewhere, I hope. I think the Sharons would have hoped that more people had pitted then because I think they were pretty keen to get their lap back. They're not that far away from it. With so many cars still on the lead lap, it really is a case of anything can happen in that final hour of the race throw all the balls in the air and see where they land at the end of the day and that's where it is. So we're under safety car, we'll take a break, come back with some explanations and what's going on on the mountain for the high-tech oils back the six hour.